Climate change is real. It's happening in New Jersey. We will see more warm extremes, fewer cold extremes. We will see heavy rains become more intense. We will see um, more frequent dry spells. And we're also going to see sea level rise continuing, which will increase the frequency and the intensity of coastal flooding. The increase in temperature due to climate change will mean we have a, a greater number of very hot days. Those hot days will lead to older people having stress on their heart, stress on their lungs. Heavy rains will have an obvious impact in flooding, but a less obvious impact in that they'll increase the amount of allergens in our region. Increased allergens, increased temperatures will lead those with asthma to have more asthma attacks. And for those who don't have asthma, they could develop asthma in unusual parts of their life. We'll see increased heat-related deaths. We'll see increased heat-related illness, such as heat stroke. We expect to see more cardiovascular diseases, more respiratory diseases, more deaths from things like drowning, and increased carbon monoxide poisoning from the improper use of generators, more uh, waterborne and foodborne gastrointestinal illnesses, increased asthma, as well as changes in the uh, patterns of vector-borne diseases like West Nile virus and Lyme disease. One thing that happens is that increased temperatures will lead to a higher level of what's called ground level ozone. Many of us have heard of bad days to go outside if you've got lung problems. That, those lung problems are often caused by either ozone, a particular uh, component of oxygen, or increased particulate matter from smog. So increased temperature increases the ground level ozone and increases the impact of all the pollution that we know is out there on vulnerable people specifically, but really everyone's ability to breathe. In regards to heat affecting public health, we're concerned about the most vulnerable people in our pop population. Uh, the young, the elderly, the infirmed, they are disproportionately affected. Um, by uh, um, heat and temperature. The potential for heat stroke, you know, aggravation of uh, conditions such as chronic pulmonary diseases, um, asthma, dehydration. Pollen and allergens are gonna be a particular problem with climate change. The, the expectation is that while we'll have more 90 degree days in the summer, we'll especially notice a later beginning of winter and early ending of winter. What that also means is that the plants will start growing earlier in the spring. They will have more opportunity to increase the amount of pollen in the air, and that will go on longer to the end of the year. Well, the, as the hard frost gets later and later, the allergens will stick around and continue to bother people with reactive airway disease. One of the connections between climate change and infectious disease has to do with contaminated water from heavy rain events, then you have runoff, you get combined sewage overflow, you can get contaminated in drinking water wells, so that can produce gastrointestinal illness. During periods of heavy um, uh, precipitation, uh, we find that an increased load of bacteria on our beaches. So basically it, it becomes a risk to our uh, bathing beach community and, and our tourists in that they might be exposed to a higher level of bacteria because of the flushing out of the storm drains and the storm sewers and so forth. Food can become contaminated if there's not enough refrigeration or if things are left out. New Jersey's infrastructure is such that heavy rains and heavy storms takes down power lines, disrupts transportation, makes it difficult for people to move between their homes and hospitals. It has a particular impact on the elderly, the homebound elderly, or people that need medical equipment like breathing machines. Those people might be in situations where they, we can't get food to them, they might have difficulty in gaining access to uh, pharmaceuticals, but also they might have difficulty getting to their jobs. A vector is usually described as an organism, usually a small organism, that moves a pathogen that can cause disease between two hosts. So for example, a mosquito would be a, a, a vector of a disease like Zika between people. 
Climate change is likely to increase our exposure to vector-borne illnesses. That if it, there's an earlier spring and a later fall, there's a longer period of time for the different vectors that can affect uh, human health to be out there. Also, if you get increased number of rain events and then stretches of dryness, this is a perfect setup for the rain creating a puddle, for mosquitoes to breed in that puddle, but the mosquitoes not to be washed away. In New Jersey, we have large populations of salt marsh mosquitoes. And salt marsh mosquitoes depend on the um, sea level. Um, they, the females lay eggs above the normal sea level of the tide, the tidal areas. If the tide is going to higher areas, they may end up laying eggs in areas that were not usually exploited. And so we're seeing hatches, large hatches of salt marsh mosquitoes in areas that the local mosquito control programs were not expecting to see. They're not prepared to treat. The expansion of the Asian tiger mosquito across New Jersey and into New England is associated with changes in average temperature, which are associated with global climate change. They were first detected in New Jersey in 1995, um, and they've been building, so they started in, in sort of the more southern counties. When I came to, to Rutgers in 2007, the, the western um, northern counties in New Jersey, Hunterton, Warren, and also in Sussex, Morris, none of them had um, the Asian tiger mosquito. All of them now have established populations. Uh, these mosquitoes such as the Asian tiger mosquito, Aedes albopictus, and the yellow fever mosquito, which is the, the Aedes aegypti, that is mostly associated with Zika and chikungunya and dengue, these are mosquitoes that are um, that usually bite people on a regular basis. And that means they can, they're, they're very dangerous as vectors. We also have the West Nile virus vector, which is also um, likely to bite people, although not as likely as the Asian tiger mosquito, but that, that mosquito does not become infected with Zika, even if it were to bite somebody infected with that virus. So that's why we're focusing on the Asian tiger mosquito as the primary danger in terms of vectoring um, these kinds of flaviviruses like Zika, chikungunya, yellow fever, um, dengue. We also ex expect to see um, increased mental and behavioral impacts from stress related to extreme events and concerns over climate change. So if you imagine a group of people who are growing up in the United States and around the world who constantly wonder what kind of world they're going to be living in a generation from now, you can imagine the day-to-day -day psychological burden on that population. It's going to be very difficult to prove that impact, but it's not clear to me we have to prove it to act to help our younger people live in this modern world. In regards to uh, mental health, um, we found that during Hurricane Sandy, a number of residents in New Jersey were adversely affected by climate change. We've seen some of the data that shows that there have been increases in mental health il illness, increases in depression, increases in uh, drug use and abuse. So we feel that um, more detail and more effort needs to be uh, taken to look at the met mental health component. There are certain factors that make populations predisposed to adverse impacts from a changing climate. So for instance, your exposure and where you live. Um, if you live in an area that's flood prone, that predisposes you to an adverse impact. What your job is, what your occupation is, will have an effect. If you're in construction, landscaping, um, those sorts of exposures increase your risk during uh, times of high heat. Everyone will be affected by the um, atmospheric effects of a climate and climate change. But the people who already have damaged lungs, people with asthma, uh, m very young people, and then people my age and older. But if they've been a smoker, if they have chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, if they have uh, emphysema, those types of people will be in really, uh, uh, really susceptible to the impact of atmospheric change due to climate change. And finally, your ability to cope and your capacity to adapt certainly impacts your ability to, your sensitivity and your vulnerability to climate change. And when we look at the social determinants of health, you know, um, uh, do you have a job? You know, do you, does that job mean that you have health care? 
all the sort of items that people don't normally think would have a, uh, a public health impact from the standpoint of climate change. Lower income communities have less resources and less infrastructure which would enable them to prepare to become more resilient and that puts you at greater risk. There are certain communities that have already disproportionate burdens in respect to environmental contaminants. Many of them are historically in urban areas, uh, riverfront communities where there may be industrial facilities still operating or there's a legacy of industrial contamination. There are communities which tend to have highways bifurcate them and so there's exposure to emissions from cars and particulates. They may be near ports. So they're getting additional exposure from atmospheric particulates as well as ozone exposure. So therefore, with climate change, it just exacerbates these issues. We need the whole community to come together and say, well, what's our most vulnerable population or, or subsets of the population? And how can we best address those needs to make sure that we have healthier communities? We have to take a holistic, a more systematic approach in the health community to, to go through these, these exposures one by one and make sure we're really protecting um, the greatest number of people and making good decisions uh, going forward with planning processes that need to start now for, for the future. Well, uh, uh, it's, a, it's become a cliche now, but uh, think globally and act locally is particularly uh, important in public health. And so we have a lot of day-to-day, -day, somewhat dreary or sometimes mundane work to do in really going door-to-door, -door, person to person, and connecting with our population and figuring out how can we help you today? How can we help you when there's a storm? How can we help you after the storm? So a number of things would be very useful to improve our ability to address climate change and public health impacts. And those things include expanding our reach into the public health community. We have established a public health working group where we've brought together many sectors from um, various uh, local, state, county, um, and the academic community in trying to work together on understanding what the needs are uh, in the public health community and so that we can start to get a, a coherent game plan. The other thing that's really important is leadership. Certainly, when you have leaders that are concerned about the issue, then that brings attention to the issue. But with leadership, we would hope come resources. So resources to conduct our assessments, resources to deliver tools to communities, resources for communities who are most at risk and need more help. We're not suggesting to create a whole new institutional structure to address climate change and public health. What we want to do is use existing delivery systems, existing planning mechanisms that are at the state level, at the county level, at the local level, so that they can start to put a climate lens through these planning processes so that we can start to think about long term what do we need to do to prepare for public health in New Jersey. Part of what public health is trying to say is climate change is something you really need to worry about. It's not just another one of the thousand things out there. This is what a big one, perhaps the big one, for the future of health in the United States and in New Jersey particularly.